On this episode of Hackbyte, I'm going to show you how to use Wireshark graphs to track down hidden Wi-Fi cameras. This episode is sponsored by PCBWay, who manufactures high-quality circuit boards and offers turnkey solutions for product assembly, 3D fabrication, machining, and more. Check out PCBWay.com for more information and learn how you can get your next big project started today. On a previous episode, my friend Cody explored different ways that you could discover hidden cameras that might be spying on you, and I briefly demonstrated how Wireshark could be used in order to track down these naughty devices. As discrete Wi-Fi enabled cameras are becoming cheaper and smaller, we're seeing them become a lot more prevalent in scenarios where people discover these perv cams in their Airbnbs or other rentals. But thanks to the wireless noise that these devices are creating on the Wi-Fi spectrum, it's pretty easy to identify them with a basic Wi-Fi scan and to pinpoint their location by tracking the signal strength through a visual analysis tool like Wireshark Graphs. In this demonstration, we're going to be specifically focusing on how to track down Wi-Fi cameras, but you can also use this technique to identify and fox on other Wi-Fi devices like rogue access points. In order to profile and track down hidden Wi-Fi cameras, the first step is to gather Wi-Fi reconnaissance, which we can do by using the Aircrack NG Wi-Fi suite. You can install this on your Linux computer by running sudo apt install aircrack-ng. And after this finishes installing, we can use the Airmon NG tool in order to place our card into monitor mode. You can do this by running sudo airmon ng, which should list out the Wi Fi cards that are currently connected to your computer. And as you can see here, I have my internal Wi Fi card, as well as this external interface. If your internal Wi Fi adapter does not support monitor mode, then you'll need to have a second card like I have here. Otherwise, you can just go ahead and copy the interface name with Control shift c and run sudo airmon-ng start, followed by the name of the interface. Finally, you can confirm that it's been placed into monitor mode just by running sudo airmon-ng one more time. And as you can see, the interface has been renamed to WLP3S0mon, indicating that it's been placed into monitor mode. If your internal card doesn't support monitor mode, or if you're going to be doing more extensive Wi-Fi hacking in the future, the Panda PAU0A is a great low-profile option that supports dual band. Although, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the PAU06, since I can hook up an external antenna. After placing the card into monitor mode, we can get started capturing Wi-Fi reconnaissance by using the AeroDump NG program. To do this, you can just run sudo aerodump-ng, followed by the name of your monitor mode interface, which we copied earlier. After doing this, you can see that the program fires up and starts channel hopping on the 2.4 GHz band. Now, since most IoT devices are operating on 2.4 GHz, it's not a problem that we're not dual band capturing on 5 GHz as well. But if you want to see how to do that, you can check out my advanced reconnaissance video, which I will link in the description below. But as you can see in this program here, we're starting to capture traffic from nearby Wi-Fi access points in the list up here, as well as nearby client devices, which should be shown down below. So now that this is up and running, we can go ahead and open up a new terminal window and open Wireshark by running sudo Wireshark. Next, you can select the interface you want to start capturing with, but as you can see, we're going to have to narrow down the scope of our capture since Wireshark is pretty excited to show us all the traffic it's capturing from various devices on the 2.4 GHz band. So this view gives us some insight to the Wi-Fi packets that are being exchanged around us, and we can see things like the source address of the packets that are being sent, we can see where they're being sent to, and also some other interesting attributes, like the channel that they're being sent on, as well as the types of Wi-Fi packets that are actually being exchanged. Now, in order to narrow down our capture, we can use the display filter input box up here in order to tell Wireshark to hone in on a specific device or a specific type of Wi-Fi device. The way that we'll do this is we're going to use the MAC address, which is basically the unique hardware address identifier of the creepy device that we're trying to track down. To do this, you can take a look at the source address column over here, where you'll notice that some of these devices show the hardware vendor name which we can use to easily spot suspicious devices or manufacturers. The way this works is if we take a look at an unrecognized MAC address like this one here, you'll see that it's comprised of six octets, which is a unique value for each of these different Wi-Fi devices. However, the first three octets are used in order to denote the hardware manufacturer, 
And thanks to Wireshark's built-in vendor database, it's pretty simple for us to identify suspicious devices by the vendor name for some of these more common devices. Like for example, this Sagemcom router, this Belkin smart home device, or some of these other ones like this Samsung electronics device here. For this demonstration, I programmed a dummy camera using an ESP8266 microcontroller to emulate the hardware address of a popular camera vendor, Axis Communications, which should be pretty simple for us to identify through Wireshark. After hiding it somewhere special, let's see how easy it is to track down the hidden camera. Switching back over to Wireshark, you can see that we're picking up packets from this suspicious Axis Communications device, who typically manufactures IP cameras. So in my case, it's pretty clear which device we want to target, since the rest of these just look like generic routers or other boring client devices. Now, to filter specifically for this device that we've spotted, I can just go ahead and double-click on the packet and expand this metadata submenu here, which is IEEE 802.11. And as you can see, it reveals some information about the frame that was being exchanged, which includes the receiver address of the packet, as well as the transmitter address, which is what we're interested in. Now, in order to set this as a display filter, all I have to do is right click on the transmitter address, hit applies filter, and then click selected. Now switching back over to this window here, once it finishes loading, you can see that the filter is now set to only show us packets that are coming from the Access Communications device. Now, if you don't have an obvious lead on your target device like I do, and don't know what vendors to look out for, you can widen the scope of the display capture to only show packets for known camera manufacturers or IoT vendors like Espresso devices, instead of honing in on a very particular device. To do that, you can use a Mac vendor lookup tool, like this one from Wireshark, to run a query for manufacturers, like in this case, Espressive devices, and this will give you a list of the unique identifiers that you would need in order to spot, for example, a smart camera that's using one of these chips. Alternatively, you can also reference the article that I linked in the description below for MAC address prefixes of common IP cameras, and also to reference the display filter I'm about to show you in Wireshark. So in order to create a filter for a generic range of MAC addresses, you can use a query like this one that searches only for the first three octets of the MAC address. And you can append multiple queries with the OR operator, so that way we're able to search for multiple types of MAC vendors at the same time. So in my case, I set my query to look for a few different types of expressive devices, which are typically found in cheap IoT cameras you might find on AliExpress a few different types of access communication cameras, and also some Sony cameras. So if I hit enter, you can see the updated packet stream, which includes our access communications perv cam, since it matches the MAC address query. Now, in order to tune the amount of information and packets we're capturing from this device, the next step is to hone in on the specific channel that the hidden camera is operating on. To do that, we'll have to find the network that this device is streaming to by looking at the destination column and identifying which of these devices is the router. And in this case, it looks like it's only sending packets to this particular MAC address. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this packet here. Then we can go down to where it says destination address, and we're gonna go ahead and apply this as a filter. So before I reload this, I'm going to go ahead and swap out the destination address parameter for the transmitter address, so that way we're also able to capture beacon frames and identify the network name. So sure enough, after applying this filter and scrolling through these packets here, you can see that this device is sending out beacon frames for a network called PervCam. So finally, I'm going to switch back over to AeroDump NG, and we're quickly going to tune the scan to the exact channel that PervCam is operating on which you can see is channel six. So in order to tune our scan to channel six, I can just go ahead and run sudo aerodump ng followed by the name of my Wi-Fi adapter and then dash C six for channel six. And this should give us a more focused and thorough scan instead of channel hopping. Finally, switching back over to the Wireshark view, we can start tracking down the perv cam by going to statistics and clicking on IO graph, where you can see I already have a parameter that's set to track down the exact hardware address of the hidden camera. Alternatively, you can also track networks by using the WLAN.SSID parameter, which you can see I have set up here for hunting down things like remote access points. Now, as for the rest of these variables, you can just set the style to a line graph and set the y-axis to plot the average of the y-field. 
And for this variable, we're going to be using WLAN underscore radio dot signal underscore DVM in order to track down the signal strength of this particular device. Then you can also just set the simple moving average period to 10 for every second. So if you copy the parameters I have set up here, this should give you a responsive graph that lets you intuitively track the signal strength of the device as you get closer to it. I also find that enabling the logarithmic scale helps produce a more pronounced result and makes it easier to detect things like drops or spikes in signal. So now, let's try this out in real life and see if we can track down the hidden camera. So as you can see, I'm in my kitchen, which is the furthest point in my house away from the hidden camera. Now, taking a look at the graph in Wireshark, you can see that the signal strength indication is pretty weak and inconclusive. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using my Panda PAU06 and this directional antenna to make it quicker and easier to find the source where the signal is emanating from. Although, if you're just using the built-in Wi-Fi card on your laptop, this should also work just fine. So now, sweeping over my living room, I start to see an uptick in signal strength as I point my antenna towards the bathroom and also approach that general area. But of course, when pointed directly at the source, it's pretty obvious where the probe cam is hidden, although I don't think I'm going to retrieve it. Although Wireshark proved useful for tracking down the perv cam, not everyone will have access to the tools I demonstrated in today's video, so in future episodes we'll take a look at ways that we can do this using mobile applications, or you can also check out Cody's video to see other methods we used in order to discover hidden cameras. If you enjoyed this video and have any ideas for upcoming episodes or other tools you want to see featured on the channel, feel free to leave them in the comments below or reach out to me on Twitter at AlexLind. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.